Okay, question for you. Uh, seeing as how I have an incredibly movie-centric YouTube channel where I talk about films and create fan-made parodies and mashups of them, I want you to take a guess as to how many times I've been to a movie theatre in the past 12 months. I mean, you'd assume someone like me would go every week, right? Well, here's the answer. In the past 12 months, I've been... One, two, three, four, once. Guys, I hate the cinema. Now, I honestly don't know how this video is going to resonate with people. Maybe you all think I'm being a whiny man-child. Maybe I'm about to start an anti-movie theatre revolution. You see, you have to compare the movie-going experience now to the experience you have watching a movie at home. And for me, I 100% would rather watch a movie in my house over the cinema. Any day, no exception. We've just entered the year 2019, and for me personally, the fact that movie theatres exist and that people still flock to them in their millions just outright confuses me. Considering the technology we have at home now, I can see little to no advantages that a movie theatre has over our humble abodes. So much so that I can list off 25. Yes, 25 reasons why going to the movie theatre makes me want to insert a soldering iron into my ear hole. We've got a lot to get through, so let's not waste any time and begin. Cue Pearl and Dean. <laughs> Number one. Starting with the obvious one, people are scum. Never underestimate how much of a dick bag the general public is, people. While you're sat there in the movie theater trying to enjoy the film in peace, there are always gonna be inevitable fuckwads present to ruin your movie going experience. I've dealt with it all, people. Assholes on the front row constantly on their max brightness setting smartphones. Loud mouths either side of you who want to have full blown conversations with their friends. Abnormally tall people who choose to sit right in front of you. There was this one time when someone brought a crying baby into a 12A screening. There was one time when someone was shining their smartphone flashlight at the projector screen for some fucking reason. Oh, and there was that one wonderful instance when I went to go see the latest Captain America and I could have sworn there was a guy behind me getting a hand job. Yeah, kind of difficult to enjoy the adventures of Steve Rogers and co when there's a possibility that there could be jizz all over your seat. <laughs> Watch a movie at home and way, well, hey, it's quiet, it's peaceful, and it's 100% jizz free. Number two. Tickets are expensive. Yeah, adult movie ticket prices here in the UK are now in the double figures, and spending £10 to see one movie is an especially hard sell today, when for about the same price, you can get yourself a month of Netflix at home where you can see as many movies as you want. Hmm, one movie? Or virtually unlimited movies? Quite the fucking conundrum. Now, granted, many cinema chains offer monthly passes now where you can see as many films as you want, but that's still more expensive than a Netflix subscription. Oh, and you have to be lucky enough to live in a country where that's even available, so yeah. God damn it! Number three. It's not that visually impressive anymore. Okay, so back in the 20th century when TVs looked like this and video quality looked like ass, going to the movie theatre made a lot of sense for that glorious panoramic surround sound experience. What you had at home didn't remotely compare. But now we have 4K televisions and surround sound systems of our own. Hell, a lot of people even have their own home projectors. So provided you're not dirt poor, you can get yourself a pretty comparable movie viewing experience at home these days. And in about 10, 20 years when those massive 8K super thin TVs they show off at CES become more affordable, well, direct your eyes to those screens and direct your middle fingers to your nearby movie theatre. Number 4. You can't pause. Now, I can't tell you of any movies I watched at home where I didn't pause at least once whilst watching. Because look, we human beings are not designed to be sat on our asses for two to three hours. We have bladders, we get leg cramp. Maybe you're a smoker and you want a cigarette break. Maybe you want a refill of your favorite beverage. Maybe you're getting some ice strain from staring at a screen too long and you want to take a break. Watch a movie at the theatre and all those things will have to be put on hold. It would help if cinema chains reintroduced intermissions. A lot of classic films had these, but they would never allow that now, because that would reduce the amount of films a theatre could show in a day, and as such, less tickets would be sold. And theatre executives wouldn't have any of that. We've got to have 
money. Number five, people are scum part two. Why are movie theaters so dilapidated and gross? I mean, if it's not sticky floors, it's broken seats, or the many tests conducted which reveal alarming amounts of bacteria present. That's absolutely disgusting. Then of course you got the restrooms, where you gotta hold your breath and slowly inch open the cubicle door to ensure you don't get a full blast of radiation poisoning. Well... There's one less turd on the seat in this one. Beggars can't be choosers. Number six, cramped seats. Wanna watch a movie at home sprawled out on your couch or your bed even? Go right ahead. In a movie theater, however, you're limited to just standard seats. I mean, you can't put your feet up, you can't truly sprawl out. And then there's the armrests. If there's someone sat next to you, only one of you can use it. So if you're going with someone, you have to take turns, don't you? I cannot believe we live in a world where we have to ration armrest time. Now yes, there are cinemas with nicer seats, but that's going to cost you more on top of that already costly ticket. Oh, and uh, speaking of extortion... Number 7. Popcorn is how much? Yeah, when you sat down for two to three hours, chances are you'll want a snack and a drink. Now head down to your local Tesco, and you can get yourself a bag of popcorn and a drink for a couple of quid. In a movie theatre, expect to pay about five times that. Now truly, add all this up. Let's say you're a family of four, a mother, a father, and two kids. The tickets will cost the family about £30 on their own, but add a drink and a bag of popcorn for everyone, and just go ahead and double that. Instead, stay at home with Netflix and order a pizza. Your wallet will thank you for it. And for those who are thinking, well, I'll just bring my own food and drink. Well, number eight, you can't bring your own food and drink. I've seen instances where people would check your bags like you're at bloody airport security. When I did go to the cinema, I always had to make sure I had a big enough pocket to pop a water bottle in. It's crazy that I feel the need to smuggle water into a movie theatre. And smuggling in your own food and drink is extra important. Because... Number 9. There's no healthy food options. Okay, so per advice of my doctor, I gotta start eating more healthily, uh, my... Uh, Liver's apparently getting a bit fatty. So, I go to the cinema, and what are my options for a nice healthy snack? Well, obviously not popcorn. Nachos? No. Hot dogs? No. Slush puppies? Definitely not. Crisps, gummy bears, pick and mix, king size bags of minstrels. Ugh. I don't know if this is specifically a British thing, but every food item that cinemas sell is pure junk. I'm not saying cinemas should stop selling all these things, but would it kill them to offer a salad? Next. Number 10. Wait, there's ads? Yeah, this one really perplexes me. Despite the fact that you paid through the roof for a movie ticket, you still gotta sit through 30 minutes worth of commercials. 30? Can you fathom the anger that would cause at home? Yeah, we know you spent £10 to rent the latest Star Wars movie, but first, here's half an hour's worth of ads. God, people complain about sitting through a 30 second skippable ad on YouTube. But, oh, 30 minutes worth of ads to see the fucking emoji movie? That's fine. Now, admittedly, movie trailers were cool to watch. Were cool to watch. You see, before YouTube, trailers were only available to watch in a theatre. As such, they were new and exciting to see. Now the movie trailers that theatres play will have already seen on YouTube. So yeah, just start the movie already. I'm laughing, but it's a laugh of impatience. Show the movie. Oh. Number 11. You can't fast forward. Why is this important? Because of a little recent phenomenon that is the post credit scene. Watching a movie at home and want to see if there is one? Just skip right ahead. In the movie theatre, sorry. I know you're bursting for the toilet, but if you want to see the tease for Avengers 27, then be sure to get comfortable for yet another 10 minutes of your miserable movie watching experience. Number 12. Pay up if you want to watch again. Watching a movie on Blu-ray or a streaming service? Well, feel free to view the film as many times as you want. In a theatre and want to rewatch the movie? Cough up another 10 quid. Fuck all that. Number 13. No subtitle option. Okay, probably the most minor point on this list. 
But often, if I'm watching a really wordy movie or one I need to pay close attention to, I sometimes like to throw the subtitles on. Or maybe I'm watching a Jeff Bridges movie and I need that little extra bit of clarification. I'm giving you the children's raid. I'm not a sharper. I'm an old man sleeping in a rope bed in a room behind a Chinese grocery. What he said. It definitely helps, and movie theaters, of course, can't offer this option. Number 14. You can't choose the start time. Yeah, at home, you can watch a movie during the afternoon, evening, or at 3 o'clock in the bloody morning if you're so inclined. In a theater, showings tend to start only every hour or so. So if you're early to the theater, you'll be standing around like a pleb waiting for the usher to let you in. And if you're late, you'll miss out on some of the movie. You can't win. Number 15. You gotta travel. Yeah, I know this is a duh entry, but really think about the extra time you're taking out of your day to go watch a movie in the theater over watching one at home. Let's add up the extra time it takes. First off, you gotta get ready to go out. Now, I know this varies wildly for people, but I'll average it out to 20 minutes. Then you gotta get to your nearest cinema. Again, this will vary. Your nearest one could be anywhere from two minutes away to an hour. But I'll add on another 20 minutes for this to average out as best I can. Then you gotta pack up, grab your popcorn, and sit down. Add another 10 minutes for that. Then you gotta sit through the aforementioned 30 minutes worth of commercials and trailers. Then, once the movie's over, you gotta add another 10 minutes because you can't skip through the credits to see if there's a post-credits scene. Add another 10 minutes to get back to your car. Add another 20 minutes to get back home. And voila! Watching the movie at the theatre cost you an extra two hours. You could have watched a whole other movie at home in that amount of time. Next. Number 16. 3D. Dear 3D, you're a terrible gimmick and nobody likes you. Fuck off and don't come back. Number 17. You can't change the volume. Yeah, I've dealt with this both ways. Sometimes theatre speakers are so quiet that even someone in the audience coughing will completely obscure what the characters are saying. The force is not a power you have. It's not about lifting rocks. It's the energy between all... <laughs> Shut the f... <laughs> But other times, the speakers can be so loud, I can literally feel my eardrums rupturing. I hope it's worth the noise! And all this could be alleviated if more movie theaters simply do the following. Number 18. Add some headphone jacks already. Now, some movie theaters apparently have these but no one I've been to make use of them. I mean, they'd be great. You could control the volume and it would drown out any noisy dickweeds in the audience. But as of now, if you want to use headphones whilst watching the movie, you got to do it at home. Number 19, the good seats can go. So if you're a little late to the theater, oftentimes the only available seats will be the ones in the front and nobody sits in the seats at the front. Cars you're mere meters from the screen and watching the movie will proceed to give you horrendous neck cramp. So, did you enjoy the movie? Yeah, it was alright. I need to get to the hospital. Number 20. Assigned seating. Why are movie theaters now doing this? Are we on an aeroplane? The reason why this sucks is because people will often not adhere to it. So if someone else sits in your seat, you gotta get them a shift. And considering that this person is clearly the unattentive type, you don't know how they'll react. They'll often say, oh, just sit anywhere. So you do, but guess what? You've just sat in someone else's seat and now you're asked to move. It's a shitty cycle and I'm now done with it. Number 21. Screen issues. So this is rare, but I have had instances when I went to go see a movie and the screen had a distracting dead spot on the projector screen. You of course will have to put up with it for the next two hours. Number 22, it makes a shitty date. Yeah, why do so many people choose the movie theater as a date? You sit in a dark room for two hours, not talking to each other. Sounds romantic. Instead, take your SO for a nice meal or do a fun activity together. I cannot believe I'm giving dating advice, but here we are. Number 23. Well, I already paid for the ticket. So of course, not all movies are good. So if you're watching a stinker at home, 
just stop and watch something else. If you're at the theater, well, you're out of luck. You already spent your hard-earned cash on a ticket, so you gotta make sure that your money goes to good use, which means you could be spending the next two hours watching The Last Airbender or some shit. I ran away from home. We got in a storm. It wasn't very smart. I was just upset. Done. Number 24, no control over the lighting. So people are different here. Some people prefer a bit of ambient lighting to balance out the movie watching experience. Others like it pitch black. At home, you can cater the lighting to your own personal desire. And of course, if you're in a theater, you can't. Often for me, the lights used to light up the alleyways can get really distracting. Often there's a light just above that I try to block out with my cap, but it never works. <sighs> Now I can't see the movie. Fuck! And finally, number 25, limited movie selection. Yeah, back to streaming services like Netflix where you have so much choice is honestly overwhelming. In a theater, you'll be lucky to get even a dozen choices. And good luck if you're a fan of foreign language cinema. Now, yes, a movie theater does offer the advantage of seeing the movie long before it comes out on DVD and digital. But come on, people, there are literally tens of thousands of movies you have not seen yet. So just wait a few months to see the latest blockbuster and spend that time catching up with some classics you haven't gotten around to yet. There will never be a shortage of things to watch at home. So why go to the cinema? <laughs> So there we go, 25 reasons why all movie theaters should be made illegal. The only times I ever go these days is when a new Star Wars or Marvel movie comes out. Cause you have to see them as soon as possible to avoid spoilers on the internet, don't you? If movies got released at home the same time as theaters, I would never set foot in a cinema again. But I'm curious as to what you all think. Maybe it's just British cinemas that suck. You guys are based all around the world, so please, Share in the comments what theatres are like where you're from. I'm genuinely curious.